What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo. We are back for another episode review. We are back for Black Ink Crew Chicago. This is season five, episode uh, 19, the Viana and the Long Haitian. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all look. This review ain't gonna be long at all. I'll be happy if I can squeeze 15 minutes out my ass because it was boring. This episode was boring. There wasn't really no good highlights to it, but um, I'm gonna try to make it most entertaining as I can because I ain't gonna lie, I was gonna go to bed and I was just gonna do this tomorrow. I was gonna do the polls review tonight, but I was like, this is boring enough. I can go ahead and knock this out because um, after I do this show, I'm going to bed. I'm tired. I'm, my body is weary, but um, we gonna go ahead and get into the bullshit, y'all. Y'all, so Charmaine and Nick at a dog park. They walking their dog or whatever. They talking about what happened the night before when they was at the shop and Bella came in with that old dumbass information that they got from uh, Evangelista Evanita that um, supposedly Van and Charmaine had fucked around when they was in Vegas, which we all know that that's some flat out bullshit. Matter of fact, they laughing at it because they know it's some bullshit too. Um, what's homeboy that Nick know? He knows Charmaine ain't messing around with that guy. Charmaine didn't fuck that boy. Girl. Anyways, they at the dog park talking about that and laughing about that. And so, Neek tells Charmaine that he wants to take her on a trip to South Carolina to go to the safari, girl. He want to take her to South Carolina. Yeah, you heard me. South Carolina to go to the safari. Now, it's cute or whatever. Really, his ultimate goal is he's going to propose to Charmaine. And so, he knows how much she loves animals. And so, he was like, you know, that'll be, you know, a great thing for us to do for uh, me to go and propose to her at the safari. Now, look here. Sir, I beg your pardon. If you're going to take me to the safari, we're going to have to go all out. I need to go to the motherland. I need some... Um, da, 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 um, da, da, I need to see some real zebras and lions and tigers and all of that. Why you want to take me to South Carolina so I can see some old racist-ass leopards and shit looking at me? Some old ready-to-shoot-my-ass-up-ass uh, uh, penguins and zebras and all that? Ain't nobody got time for that. You need to take me to the motherland if you're trying to take me to a safari. And especially, you're going to propose to that girl it's y'all propose come on now nick i don't know if he was short on funds but they got money and and y'all work for vh1 so i know y'all could have squeezed um antigua something up out there nigeria something you know what i'm saying but you know it's cute or whatever he gonna propose to her and so he gonna fly the whole gang down to south carolina y'all we finna go see some Lions and tigers and bears and all that shit, y'all. Oh, Lord. So, y'all, back at Hood Mag, Bella, Dawn, and Van, they all sitting and they talking about again what happened the night before from the party when Bella came in with this fraud-ass information and basically how um, Evanita even got there in the first place. Bella's sitting there quiet as hell. She did tell them about how the night before, how she had had uh, drinks or whatever with Lily and how Evanita Evangelista had popped in on them when they was having drinks and how she had told them that they were having a party. Well, actually, Lily had told her about the party. Party. She claims she didn't invite her, whatever, didn't matter. Van, once again, is saying I didn't fuck, he didn't mess with that girl. I wish I would stop asking that. He didn't mess with that damn girl. Ooh, see, see, they got them edges, they itching, Lord, they itching. Right then, Danielle walks in. Danielle comes in to tell them about Neek's plan of going to South Carolina, and he wants the whole gang to come down so they can surprise Charmaine when he proposes to her. Ain't nobody really too much excited about it. They just like, uh, free trip. All right, you know, we in, whoop de whoop, whatever. Bella asking, can I go? Am I invited? Danielle like, well, he didn't invite you, but he didn't like, not not invite you neither so i'm saying like i mean you know what i'm saying like he didn't invite you but he did not not invite you neither so i mean you know what i'm saying it's lines read between them bella read between them so 
They finna gear all up in the gang. You know, they flown up to um, North Carolina or South Carolina. They flown down to South Carolina. And so, of course, Neek and Charmaine are flying in on different flights or whatever. And um, as they get to the um, hotel or whatever, they're in their car. And so, they're driving to wherever the, wherever the hell their hotel is, whatever, right? And so, they actually... Um, they stop at this little store that they see on the side of the road or whatever. Come to find out, a little convenience store is like a little Confederate flag store. Y'all in South Carolina, it ain't too many of, you know what I'm saying, African Americans allowed down there. So, of course, you're going to be up in the Confederate flag store. But you know what was even crazier? Lord have mercy, it was a black woman working in a Confederate store. I was like, what? In the nigga is this? What in the house nigga is this? Lord, 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 Lord. Okay, but hey, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So Van offers her his jacket and asks her, you know, can I have your shirt? Because he's like, man, fuck this shit. I don't want you in this goddamn um bullshit or whatever so he ends up giving her her jacket whatever it was cute so he takes her shirt and he ends up throwing her shit in the goddamn trash that was funny as hell to me but that's crazy that's crazy that store was straight confederacy everywhere on on the glasses on the tables on the shirts on the headbands on the goddamn on the water bottles it was on everything everything as soon as i walked up in there, i'd be like oh I think I hear the sounds of nooses being made around here. I'm gonna go, on, go this way. See y'all, another boring part in there. Everybody gets to the house. Um, Charmaine and Nick arrive. They surprise them, whoop de whoop. Charmaine had pretty much figured out that Nick is gonna um, propose to her, which, I mean, he's, Danielle is planning everything. And nothing against Danielle, but Danielle don't really, like, she done planned some shit before in the past and it really didn't too, come up too much well, but, you know what I'm saying? They at the house. You know, they surprise them. Time, pause. Time out. Charmaine, why are you so loud? Girl, you would think her mama was a bullhorn as loud as she is. She is so fucking loud. She was, I, I know I'm allowed. I, I, my voice carries. You know, I, I get that from my daddy. My daddy from New York. What can I say? But, her voice, it carries and it echoes and it has a boisterous to us that, oh my God. And then it's just too much. It's too much. It's too much. But you know what I'm saying? They, they excited because, you know, everybody came out there to surprise them. Whoop de whoop. They're in the house, like chilling or whatever, right? Next thing you know, Bella ass pop up and everybody, if, if for nothing else, Charmaine and Nick looking like, bitch, what in the Fuck, who invited you? What are you doing here? Well, that's when Danielle says, well, you didn't specifically say who and who couldn't come. So when I set the invitation, it was pretty much like, you know, everybody. And so Charmaine ended up feeling bad for her ass because Bella basically begging to spend the night. So Charmaine is like, I don't care about you spending the night. I just basically, you was fucking with her, so I wasn't fucking with you because Bella was complaining that y'all blocked me on social media. Bitch, so what? So what? Let me tell you something. Let me just let me just take a pause for the calls and air out, air out my balls. I can't stand it when people get upset because you have unfollowed them or you have blocked them on social media. Do y'all not realize that social media coming through the goddamn screen and having real feels and emotions can be not so real at times? What I mean to say is. If you know me and you really know me and you 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 love me and I'm your family and or I'm your friend or, or I'm your or whatever, why the fuck does it make a difference whether or not we are friends on social media? Quite honestly, I, do, I mean, I, there was a point in time I didn't want to be friends on social media with people that I work with because you don't know who is, you know, really your friend and who's a spy 
out to watch you just so they can go back and tell the boss or the supervisor what it is that they saw. And so it took me a while to sort of get out. And quite honestly, I'm only friends on social media with people that I feel like I can honestly be friends with outside of work. And that's just me being honest. Hey, y'all, if y'all watch my video, we friends on Instagram or Facebook. That's because y'all my bitches, though. Nothing against nobody else. I'm just saying. They, like... People can get so caught up in this, oh, you friended me, you befriended me, we was cool, you blocked me, you unblocked me, you follow me, you unfollow me. So the fuck? What? Who cares? You know what? I'm getting in my own feelings for a minute. I'm getting in my own, put it in the back of your mind, Mo. Put it in the back. Take a sip. We're going to move right along from that. A part that was cute, though, they went to this little plantation, and the tour guide that was there was giving them an excellent tour. Bitch, she gave me chills. She was telling them stories about how some of the slaves had to stay 14 and 20 people sometimes in a little tiny-ass shack, how the plantation, it was a rice plantation that they were on. How they had to watch out for alligators and shit coming up from the swamps and getting in while they outside picking the white man's rice for him and his kids and family to eat while like, we out here gotta watch out for crocodiles and shit like that y'all it was some touching shit now if i could go to say if kip if you know what i'm saying i'm stuttering and shit because i ain't gonna lie i don't know if i would ever go to south carolina just because i didn't heard too many bad stories about south carolina i hope nobody from south carolina watching this get offended because i don't mean to offend you in no kind of way because it ain't nothing personal towards you unless you involved in some of that shit it ain't got nothing to do with you but from what i heard and listen i can't talk because i'm from texas and hey it's a place here called two below texas it, from the history i heard it was two niggas that lived there and now they down below so trust me we not too far from mesquite i know but what i'm saying is if i were to ever get the opportunity okay you understand me to go to south carolina yes i will go and visit that plantation because i actually have family that's in i believe it's richmond virginia this is my dad's family and i remember when my great grandmother passed away i went to visit her home and her home was in i don't know i want to say it was richmond virginia anybody watching me from that I, my family i apologize if i'm getting it wrong you know what i'm saying put it down in the comments support your kinfo but we went to that home and from what i was told that was like old plantation land or you know, something like that and so it was just really surreal out there i remember us me and my dad actually going to a convenience store and one of the convenience stores we went into had confederate flags up and things like that and i remember i was like oh shit daddy yeah you know i'm saying you like a superhero to me and all of that but um i don't think you can beat these good old boys so i think we need to go ahead and get our shit and get the fuck on up out of here which is exactly what the hell we did but um anyways it was really cool just to hear about that history and to learn about that little brief moment of history and honestly i think it was good for them it was a good look for the show you know what i'm saying because black ink crew y'all just been on some ratchet shit but you know what i'm saying black history black power black girl magic it was all that blackness and i was just loving it so y'all afterwards they back over there at the house whatever four new boo come in her name is sophia i want to say her name is sophia the body she actually used to fuck with caesar she was on a past episode of the first black ink crew or whatever right she's there they chilling bella with her nosy ass so y'all fucking or not everybody like bella damn bitch my business next thing you know jen and nikki come in now jen was invited by van of course but she being on some petty shit she bought nikki in knowing nikki and van ain't talk since they broke up and then van got his new boo here which i know she didn't know that part but even still so nikki come in nikki like oh hey sophia and who are you sophia sophia like hold on i don't want no problems i don't know what this shit right here is but this shit right here between y'all, I ain't got nothing to do with. Me and four on some new, new shit. I know y'all got some old, maybe, something still, but I ain't got nothing to do with. I ain't mad at her. Homegirl was like, bitch, I came here. I ain't trying to fight with no goddamn body. So, <laughs> time out. This one part that I love, baby, when uh, Jen went and creeped in the bed with Van and she was fucking with Van, Baby, I passed the hell out because every single thing that she was doing, I do to my husband. Bitch, I do that to my husband and I'm sober. 
I love fucking with him. I love messing with him. I love irritating him. I love annoying the hell out of him. And oh, don't let me be tipsy. This is just, uh, this ain't nothing. This ain't gonna do nothing. It's just to make me feel good. Now, this is Friday, Saturday night. I done had about two, three, four of these. I be annoying the hell out of him. And he loves every bit of it. Nigga, for better or worse. Anyway, so it was really cute the way she was in there annoying the shit out of him. But then, next thing you know, Four asked if he could take Nikki outside to talk to her. So basically, he goes outside to tell her that, you know what I'm saying, basically, you was the, the straw that broke the camel's back in my depression. It's because of you that I finally went over the deep end, and then I had to live out my depression on camera in front of everybody when you knew what I was going through, and then you tried to reach out to me through social media, and I appreciate that shit. She tries to apologize, but I don't feel like it was like a... For real, for real, like, I recognize what I did wrong. You was going through something and I wasn't there. It was more or less like, well, I tried to reach out and, you know what I'm saying, you cheated on me on my birthday and you did, which that's bad. I get that not saying that one thing trumps another. Just being that I myself go through depression, I have my times where I'm good and I have my times where I am bad. And I'm a strong person, so don't nobody check on a strong person. But um, he was basically letting her know that what you did was a big huge factor in why I went down the road of depression that I went in and so they talked they cleared up the air and they you know sort of moved on from there she's like no hard feelings and he's just like eh you know I got love for her I'm not in love with her which I really don't fucking believe for you love that goddamn girl because she was looking at her ass the whole time she was walking by hell she had a bit I was looking at her ass she was walking. I'm like god damn how many ass cc's is that I wonder what my insurance cover that shit. But anyways, y'all, that was the end of the episode right there. It was good and boring. I hope I made the review entertaining enough for y'all. Um, yeah, I didn't miss nothing. Please let me know what y'all think about this video. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out, y'all. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.